of Elav and Harai as international football returns to the Stoke race course. Let's give you the teams then. Familiar figure in goal to Wrexham fans. Danny Ward started his days here at Wrexham. Then across the back, Nico Williams also started his days at Wrexham here. Regan Poole, the first debut done. Joe Lowe, another next to him. And the captain, in, in his 81st cap, Ben Davis. In midfield, Jordan James, Liam Cullen making his bow. Either side of them, Wes Burns and Charlie Savage, whose dad, Robbie, is watching proudly from the stands. Haven't seen him yet, but I'm sure we will. And up front, Kiefer Moore and Nathan Broadhead. The Gibraltar side, well, they have uh, four players who play their football outside of Gibraltar. Dale Colling is in goal. Roy Cipollina is on the uh, right-back side. He's in his 71st cap, and he is age 40. Jack, he's alongside Jack Sar Sargent, Ethan Jolly and Jace Oliveira who plays his football in Helsingor in Denmark. Nicolas Pozzo, who's just making his way through in Cadiz in Spain, is next to Liam Walker, one of the many Red Imps uh, caps in the team. Louis Annesley of Dundalk is next to them and up front Ethan Brito. Kyan Ronan of Kings Lynn of National League North and TJ Debar of Wickham Wanderers who of course will face his teammate Joe Lowe could be marking him indeed the centre-back making his bow for Wales the referee is Philip Ferrugia of Malta it's Wales, all in red, playing towards the cop end, which of course is an empty end. They're waiting to build the cop. It's Gibraltar though, all in white, ready to kick off, playing from left to right. Hardly an empty seat, bar the posh seats in front of us. Seem to be a few red seats here. And the referee just waiting for the okay the all clear to kick off this friendly international of course Wales's big guns really being kept ready for that huge game against Croatia on BBC Radio Wales on Sunday referee looks uh, just about ready to start and the oldest international stadium in the world gives Welsh football a glimpse of the future with four new caps in the side and a first touch for both Joe Lowe and Charlie Savage on the ball now clicks it back in the midfield Nico Williams says I'll deal with that and it looks like Regan Poole is going to be playing right side he gets a touch now and it goes wide to that far side Broadhead and Kiefer Moore are very definitely uh, leading the line and Liam Cullen of Swansea City is going to play just in behind those two touch to Jordan James wide on the right hand side Wales building playing from right to left back to James again alongside me Nathan Blake and Dave Edwards and Nathan you and I and Dave you've been on that pitch as well where that anthem has been sung but I can't think of a more stirring rendition than that hold on Nico Williams shoots right footed blocked though bounces out to Jordan James Nathan yeah, good evening all. Uh, yeah, fine rendition, uh, Rob. 
just interested to see you know, how Gibraltar set up, set up with a back five and four across the midfield and one up front. So, you know, they've clearly set their stall out here to defend, try and keep the, the score line respectable. It's for Wales now to just, just go and break them down. Yeah, it's Wes Burns playing out on that uh, right-hand side. We're in nine of Ipswich Town. He's one of the players who's playing regularly, and Ipswich, of course, flying at the top of the championship. Let's say hello to Dave Edwards. We've been hearing from him anyway. Uh, Dave, I remember you playing in a race course international here against Norway. As the ball is played down the left-hand side, too strong, though, and now for a goal kick. Yes, I did, yeah. My third cap it was. Um, always love playing at the race course sort of not being too far away from here so yeah it's a, a great atmosphere and especially once that new stand's built the cops redone I think it'll be a terrific stadium to play international football at um, it's great for these North Walesians to get themselves a game like this as well um, but Wales have started okay on the front foot just need to move the ball really quickly like early mistake there by uh, well a mix up between Cipollina and the goalkeeper Poling Roy, Roy Cipollina Born in Enfield, he's a prison officer. Not all these uh, players are part-time, though. Yeah, I'm just surprised to see them doing what you see, like Premier League teams doing and top international teams. You know, goalkeeper two centre halves in a six-yard box trying to play out. The keeper plays it straight out the touch. I mean, you know, put the ball up. It's down to them how they play, but just inviting unnecessary pressure. Ball forward, looking for uh, TJ Debar, who plays his football at Wickham Wanderers. So should be known to uh, Joe Lowe. Wales approach halfway. Touch for Charlie Savage wearing the orange boots. And back to Savage again. Threads it through. Little turn. But. Uh, Wills are thwarted. Davis sets in though and wins back possession for Wales. Broadhead was caught uh, in possession. This is Davis, the captain. Just five of these players played against South Korea in the friendly which preceded the victory over Latvia in Latvia Burns is wide on that right hand side threads it into more more holds up little touch inside for Cullen Cullen breaks past one sets a broad in who shoots and pulls it wide yeah good play there keep it more back to goal lovely little layoff to Cullen Cullen thought oh, I'll take the shot on but in the end it's uh, Broadhead just dragged it across the goalkeeper and wide but good football yeah Liam Cullen just one goal for Swansea City this season been a bit unlucky I think because he uh, he always looks as if he might score when he gets the chance does uh, Liam Cullen born in Tenby don't know much about him as James his uh, presence just too much but actually too much of the referee as well it's nil nil and we've played five minutes and Dave Edwards, we expect to be looking to our left for most of this first half. Yeah, Wales already dominating possession. Um, some good touches as well in midfield for Charlie Savage and Jordan James. Important they get into the game as quickly as possible. But it's that ball speed which is important. They had it on that occasion, like Nathan was saying, into Kiefer Moore, had bodies around him, get their first chance. But that's going to be important, how quickly they move that ball tonight. Yeah, great point, Dave. Because uh, one touch, two touch, you know, it's like the longer this game goes, you know, without Wales scoring, the more confidence the opponent grows. And it becomes extremely difficult. Then getting that first goal, people get anxiety and snatch at opportunities and things. So important, this first 10, 15 minutes, Wales just settled into a nice rhythm, which they have done. Try and get themselves ahead on the score sheet. It's a foul on that uh, left-hand side. Um, that's on TJ Debar. He's the cousin of uh, teammate Ethan Jolly. There's uh, quite a few relations in the Gibraltar side, as you might expect, since it's just a little rock perched on the end of Spain. 
And then Wales are going to have their first defensive duty as the free kick is swung in from the left-hand side. And Wes Burns heads it over the top. And it's going to be the first corner. It's going to Gibraltar. It's nil-nil here on BBC Radio Wales. Dangerous ball, isn't it? Really swung in. Now, interestingly, Wales are keeping three up. And actually, uh, Williams has gone back there. Played into the penalty area, headed away by Kiefer Moore. Picked up by Debar. And it comes back in, floated cross. Good header away by Lowe that time. It's chipped in again. Once again, it's headed up. But Wales can't relieve the pressure. Then it's uh, lobbed forward and out for a goal kick. They dealt with that. And these days in international football, they say there are, there are no easy games. You've got to get the job done, haven't you, uh, Nathan Blake? Yeah, you have to. I think, like I said, the importance is getting off the mark, getting that first goal, because the longer it uh, evades you, Rob, the more difficult the game becomes. And if you can get that first goal, settle everyone down, and uh, get yourself into a rhythm early doors, and you should go on and win the game comfortably. But... It's not easy scoring goals. No. It's nothing it's worse than when someone tells you you've got to win and you have to go and beat a lowly opposition. And, you know, they're set in. We see it in the FA Cup often, don't we? Teams sit in and, you know, counter-attack. Well, football would be boring if it wasn't shocks. We just don't want one tonight. No, Thank you very exactly. much. Uh, this is James. We're doing inside the Gibraltar half. Plays it square to Savage in the orange boots. Wide to Nico Williams. Williams now takes on his man down this left-hand side. Gets to the byline, little drag back. And then a little nutmeg, but actually Jack Sargent copes with that. Will he get out of that defensive position now? Williams sticks at it, and he does. Sargent gets away from him. Up towards the bars, drops short. But the ball is seized upon by Broadhead. Now low is forward into Broadhead. Chance here for Cullen, just taken away from him. It's out by Annesley, who plays his football in Dundalk, and Wales have their first corner. Yeah, speed of pass again, as Dave just mentioned. One-touch football almost got them in. Eight minutes gone, goalless. Wales corner from the left-hand side, taken into the box. That might have been going in as well, but it's headed away from the six-yard box. Chance again for Broadhead. Turns, right-footed cross into the... Uh, penalty area but chips it over the crossbar and the bearded polling is happy to see it go over the top and it remains goalless Dave Edwards it's been some good moments isn't there from Wales in these early stages that interlinking movement in and around the box and the big difference in international football over the last say two or three decades is that they can get in their shape and they can defend well doesn't mind if they've got technical de deficiencies they've got good coaches now and they can set themselves up be hard to beat and you can see the shape of the team five along the back four in front trying to really limit any space to Wales in the centre of the pitch and that's what's going to make it difficult yeah their coach is actually Carlos Ribeiro who's a Uruguayan Williams tries to get in behind on this left hand side and the Gibraltar fans, there's a knot of Gibraltar fans in front of us and they're cheering every time their, one of their players wins a tackle, wins a header. There's a little nutmeg on Nico Williams. It was, so they yeah, they enjoyed that, didn't they? Yeah, they did, yeah. Nil-nil, James Savage, central of the midfield, chips it out to... Williams down the left hand side back inside the Savage central Davis is available goes square to Jordan James 15 yards in the penalty air Kiefer Moore turns into Broadhead sets it up for Moore but it's uh, kicked away before the striker can get there and then uh, TJ Debar runs into Savage and comes off worse cross into the penalty air from Burns on that right hand side he's not going to get that Coling comes out for it we're in bright yellow I do like Jordan James, you know, Rob. We've seen him in Latvia. He passes the ball forward 99% of the time. Boone steps in. Moore will look for this, but it drifts up for a goal kick. Sorry, Nate. Yeah, just saying. Jordan James always seems to pass that ball forward, even if it's in a little 5, 10 yards. It's a real plus in his game. So important for a midfielder. As I'm sure my man next to you can tell you, passing that ball forward for a striker 
and the tackers is hugely important. There's an injury out on that right hand side, so chance for one or two of the Wales players to take on fuel. Tony Roberts now of AC Milan. But he's proud of that. Obviously done, doing a good job as goalkeeping coach because uh, he's converted Giroud into a goalkeeper, hasn't he? <laughs> Olivia Giroud, wow. I'm sure Robert will take the credit for that. Dave, you know him pretty well. <laughs> I was I was actually gutted to see him leave Wolves. He's obviously been there for a few years. I know they speak so highly of him um, within the football club. So it's a bit of a shock to see him leave, but what an opportunity to, to go to AC Milan. The word is when he gave uh, his first song, you know, in the induction, like the first game, you give a song on the eve of yeah. the game. He sang Ness and Dormant. <laughs> <laughs> I can that imagine him having all a go over. That. <laughs> that is him all over. What was your first one then? Come on then, boys. Oh, it? Yeah, what was your song? What was your indus- oh. induction song at one of your clubs? I can't remember that far back, Rob. It'd be an R&B song, uh, I know. It'd probably... Um, Candy cameo. All right, yeah. Or yeah. word up some. I know that, that dance. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Edwards, you just keep um, trying that dance for me. <laughs> I can't remember what my first was, but I do remember in the um, in the Euros, you used to do the quizzes, like in between the games and things. And if you lost, you'd have forfeits. And one of mine was to stand up and sing, and I did Otis Redding sitting on the dock of the bay. That was the only one I knew the words. Yeah, but it's the only one I knew the words to, so I was panicking a little bit. <laughs> We lost the quiz the following week and had to get up right. and dance to no music as well. <laughs> now, Wes Burns does not look in a good way on that right-hand side. And the, the very last thing Rob Page wants, other than a defeat, is to suffer injuries. And Wes Burns is making his way off. And that is a big blow to Wales. What, 13 minutes in? One of the players who's on form this season. And I don't think Wes Burns is clutching his his arm. So there's movement on the bench. And we'll see who's coming on. As, uh, it's 10 against 11 at the moment. The Wales are happy to hold possession in their defensive. I've got to say, Joe Lowe, son of the former Cardiff player Josh Lowe, he's a big unit, isn't he? We're in 25. I mean, they're all big to me, but he is big, isn't he? He's tall. He's a big lad. Anyway, he's on the ball now. Was on the books of Bristol City. This is Davis, the captain. Still waiting for the Wales change. Where's Burns of Ipswich? Walking around behind the goal in front of the building site, which is the cop. And it's Daniel James who's going to go on from Leeds United. Scored for Leeds on Saturday. Davis now. Y2 Williams. Just outside the penalty. Davis has gone forward. Little trip spotted by the referee. Free kick Wales. Daniel James on four. Wes Burns a lot earlier than Rob Page would have expected. And I don't think that looks very good for Wes Burns. No. Dave Edwards? No, it's a real shame, isn't he? He's been in scintillating form for Ipswich. I'm sure Kieran McKenna will be watching this, the Ipswich manager, and he'll be a little bit gutted at what this news might be. He's got, almost got in a sling in his shirt, hasn't he? He's yeah, come down like on his horrible. elbow or his shoulder. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. looks terrible. Yeah. Uh, he's walking around but clearly in discomfort and looks absolutely devastated by it uh, Rob Page goes out to do a touch on his shoulder and Wales have a free kick left hand side Cullen is stood over it so is the substitute Dan James James right footed into the penalty air can't get it up past the first man may have another chance down this left hand side Puts it short of Cullen. Low ball into Cullen. And went right across the six-yard box. Cleared away. Yeah, needed someone gambling there. Williams drives it to the edge of the box. Broad edge shoots. And it just goes wide. He's instinctive at the moment, Nathan Broadhead. Scored, of course, that uh, late goal in Croatia. Yeah. And he's in good scoring form for Ipswich with five goals this season. Yeah, Rob Page will be disappointed with that though. And Joe Lowe, centre back in the striker position, should have gambled. 
on his heels a bit. Kiefer Moore also at the fast stick. He's waiting for the ball to be stood up. Now the change has meant that uh, James is on the left-hand side. Nico Williams has moved across to the right-hand side. This is Broadhead. Who had that uh, shot on the turn. Savage seeing plenty of the ball. And Regan Poole started his days at Cardiff, then came through at Newport County, Manchester United. Lincoln, now he's at uh, Portsmouth. Cullen into Broadhead. Broadhead runs into strong challenge. And Gibraltar, every touch is with an ole, but James gets back there to stop the bar. And then Lowe comes under defence. Cullen short to James. James pods it right to Williams. Middle inside the Gibraltar half. James again on the ball. Patient build up by Wales. Charlie Savage, nil nil on BBC Radio as well. He's overhit that, but Dan James pulls out to collect on his knee. Cuts inside, low crossing. Headed down, no Wales player there. Broad was, just, Broadhead was in. Well, he missed it. Yeah. He turned his head, Rob. Just needs a little skimmer there. He turned his head and tried to put a little bit of power on it. Just missed the ball completely. Williams on the deck towards Cullen. Midway inside the half is Savage. This time, Kiefer Moore didn't read the pass. Cleared away by Coling. Anywhere will do at the moment for him. 18 minutes gone, goalless on this international friendly at the Stoke Racecourse, the home of Wrexham. No Robin Ryan tonight. It's the Wales Stars who are providing the stardust. James and Savage again. Cullen who's darting around in behind the strikers. Broadhead again. It's very crowded on the edge of the box. And that time it was uh, a little challenge from Cipollina, the greying Cipollina. In fact, balding Cipollina as well. Surely appreciate you pointing yeah. that out, Rob. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Double digs there. <laughs> yeah. he's, the, he's the first Gibraltar and the oldest Gibraltar player to score in a competitive uh, uh, a Europa League game against uh, Slova Bratislava. There you go. I think you already knocked him out with that second dig. Uh, well, I'm just saying. I'm trying to build him up now. <laughs> well, he is. Uh, I saw him running down the tunnel. He's going slightly great. He's got a ball patch on the top. What can I see? <laughs> Enough already. We know. I know. I know. I got my glasses. Nil, on. nil. Thank he you won't mind. <laughs> I don't think we're big in Gibraltar. <laughs> And I won't be going there for a holiday anytime <laughs> soon after this. No. <laughs> you won't find someone looking for you. Actually, I've been to Gibraltar. It was okay. Just a day trip. Nil-nil. International football. Back at the race course. The 95th international on this... Uh, the oldest international football ground. This is Savage to James in the centre circle. Regan Poole moves forward. Overlaps, but Nico Williams looks inside to Savage. And then Savage looks to the runner, Daniel James, and that's easily headed away by Jack Sargent. Yeah, I think Wales are going to have to push their full-backs on here, Rob. You get the wingers to drift inside a little yeah, and get the over, overlaps from the full-backs because... Uh, Right now, they're not going to play through this team. No, they're not. Williams goes on the outside, but he's uh, stopped in his tracks by Ethan Brito. But then they give the ball away. Williams into the penalty area, went slaloming in and wins another corner. He's looking for a shooting chance. There's Nico Williams. And like Nate was saying there, I think... Dan James is high and wide on this left-hand side. He made a diagonal run, but it's into numbers, isn't it? Yeah. So Charlie Savage has a difficult ball. When they've had joy, Charlie Savage has actually been hitting big diagonal crosses. He'll give Dan James a bit more time then to get at his full-back. Bit of shoving between uh, Lowe and uh, Louis Annesley, born in London. Plays his football in Dundalk, his uh, 38th cap. He was actually on the books of Chelsea and Blackburn Rovers. Was Annesley. 
Corner coming in from the right hand side. Floated across. Can't get the kick of more. Jordan James. Oh, he, he's all lined up for him to have a bang on the edge of the box, but ballooned off his right foot and I think he got caught in two minds there Robert I'm not sure whether he's hit it in the half volley by the looks but he looked like he could have taken a little step forward and volleyed that looked like he was unsure James is in to rob possession high up the field Wales won a corner and they get one still trying to play out Nath aren't they the they are, <laughs> they are. Team. I, I think it's you know I had this conversation the other night with my uh with my mate talking about everyone's gone to this Pep style of football, but Pep got the only Pep one players. Do it. Well, yeah. you ain't got Pep's mind. Corner from the left hand side, headed home, and it's the captain Ben Davis who's opened the scoring with a close range header. He will be so proud to lead his nation. He'll be even prouder now to grab another goal. And it's Wales 1, Gibraltar 0. Yeah, simple in the end, wasn't it? Ball in from a corner. And James inside the six-yard box. And Mark really gets up well. And he's headering that from all of, what, two, maybe three yards out. Can't miss, really. Still has to be put in the net. Gibraltar masters their own undoings there, trying to play at the back, giving away the corner sloppily. Yeah. Nathan Broadhead took the corner. He's putting some good deliveries, hasn't he, on the set pieces, Nathan Broadhead. This time it's high to the back post and unmarked Ben Davis. Simplest of tasks. Not prolific in a whale shirt, but he won't score many easier goals than that no. either. And it's important, isn't it, boys, because Rob Page will not want any more injuries and he will surely want to get this game as good as over by an hour, say, so he can start making changes, pull off people like Ben Davis ready for Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. I think you want to get to about 3-0 as quickly as possible and then it will become a, a real exhibition sort of match. But uh, until you're there, you know, one goal is not enough because as we've seen in Croatia, Rob, last minute, free kick, ball in, we score and come away with a point. So, yes, it's a friendly, but Wales are going to want to win this and win it convincingly for me, yeah. even though they got youngsters out. This is James. Ben Davis' second goal for his country. Well, his 81st appearance moves... Uh, just a couple behind Aaron Ramsey now in uh, caps for Wales I'm sure he'll make the century his other goal was in the 5-1 win over Belarus in the World Cup and Kalolan Acapello style around the race course TJ Debar up against his Wickham teammate Joe Lowe. Debar gets the edge of the box and then the goal scorer Ben Davis does his defensive duty. Lovely little uh, back heel by Broadhead to get Wales out of trouble. Cullen helps it wide to Williams. Williams holds it up on halfway, goes inside to James. Now in the centre circle is Savage. Wales moving right to left, leading 1 0. The goal scorer on the ball now, Davis, wide to. Daniel James James takes on his man but actually good pace by Jack Sargent very good and gives the ball away to Davis the, his fellow number four Charlie Savage clips it in look at the keeper ball 2-0 lovely cross by Savage and Moore does what keeper Moore does powers home the header from close range it's Wales 2, Gibraltar 0. Yeah, that's a really good goal. And a lovely ball by Charlie Savage. Ball set back to him, takes a touch. And picks Keeper out, you have to say. Doesn't just float the ball in there. Picks Keeper more out. He's waiting at the back post. Keeper gets up and almost hangs there. Beautiful header. Lovely time. Back across the keeper. And in off the far post. Really good goal, that. Incredible header. World-class header, it really was. It was it had nothing to run on to. Charlie Savage said he had to pick him out because Keeper Moore was marked, but he's just used his size, got up. Powerful header back across the goal, posting in. 
Really, really good goal by Wales and great for Charlie Savage. I think he's had a really good start to this game. He must have made over 30 passes already. He's been at the heart of everything and now he's got that assist as well. Dave Edwards and Nathan Blake, former Wales internationals alongside me, enjoying what we're seeing of this young Welsh side with a bit of experience as well. But they're... Uh, they're delivering what the race course faithful would want so far. Williams cross into the box again. This time Moore tumbles over. It's going to be picked up by Dan James. Cuts inside the penalty here. Thinks about clipping it and he does. Tries to curly right footed. High and wide of the far post. Again, I think caught in two minds, Rob. Thought to himself, first of all, I'll, uh, I'll check back and take him on. Realise he had more space and time than what he thought. And then got caught in between shooting and crossing the ball to the far stick for a key for more so it's a it's a great evening here at the race course i've got to say I, I, when i came in there's a little girl sat beyond the press box here i'll give her a mention isabel williams here with her dad it's her first ever football game she's watching wales tonight i offered her one of my fruit pastels and she took two can't fall back in here. She's about is that, six. Is that why you didn't offer me one? <laughs> well, so, um, her and her dad are really happy. And she looks very content. And somehow she's got a team sheet. I don't know where that came from, but she's got one. <laughs> so, it's that sort of night, I think. As uh, Gibraltar have a free kick played wide to... TJ Debar and he overhits the cross. The uh, free kick was worked. You have to say they tried that. Liam Walker was the man who played the free kick, who actually played in the Island Games on the Isle of Wight, and he scored a hat trick against Anglesey. Okay. Stick with me for the facts, boys. Yeah, yeah, well. You're going to learn a lot about your stick with you. Tonight. Only the thing is, i got a life, Rob. <laughs> 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 2 0 Wales here on BBC Radio Wales. Oh, Savage caught late. That's going to be a free kick right in front of the referee as well. And the free kick is taken quickly. There's Nicholas Pozzo of Cadiz. Yeah, it's gone exactly the way Page you would have wanted it, I think. You know, the only thing you could have wished for was an early goal in the first five or six minutes, but... Two goals in three minutes probably made up for well, that, Well, it's think? the perfect pattern, isn't it? You know, you settle into the game, new players, four debutants. You know, you get about 20 minutes in, can you get yourself a goal? Yes, they do. Get another one a few minutes later, settle now into a lovely little rhythm try and get that third goal once that goes in once if they get it then you know it's job done basically oh dan james breaks through the challenge this time shoots right foot in and calling uh well pretty enthusiastically punches it away nico williams now picks up right side of the penalty here slots it inside oh puzzle makes a mistake goes back towards his own six yard box loose ball picked up by james cullen to savage he wants the ball all the time central position Davis wants somebody to go wide. Broder did react eventually. Savage may look for him now and does. Wide on the left. Level with the Gibraltar penalty here. James goes inside him. Lovely cross with his left foot and headed out for a corner. And Wales are starting to lay siege to that Gibraltar penalty here. Yeah, and I can see what we spoke about before the game, saying Charlie Savage, a bit different to his dad, and he is. He's very much get it, give it, get it, give it. He's, he keeps the game ticking and he's got a... He's not afraid to pick a pass, long field, or, you know, try and thread something through the middle of you. He played a Europa League game for Manchester United, didn't he, when his dad was commentating. As this corner comes in from the right-hand side, deep corner. Davis wins the first header. Colin collects on the second. And immediately throws it out. And there's a Gibraltar player testing the... Uh, Testing the pace of Regan Poole then, but Poole, Poole yeah. stuck with him. It was Kean Ronan yeah. of Kings Lynn Town in the National League North. Testing the hamstrings that one, Rob. That one was, <laughs> but it's good to see Regan Poole, isn't it, Nathan? It's you and great. I will probably remember him most from Newport days. Yeah, I was. When he was there. a hot prospect coming through, wasn't he? Yeah, well, I was uh, helping the chairman there when um, Man United were in for him. And uh, he was considering not going, but uh, managed to convince him in the end. 
and it's lovely to see you know he is a lovely lad great personality and a great pro good play by Wales down the left hand side Davis sets it up for Savage oh goalkeeper well just about got it away wasn't very convincing maybe coming back at it that would have been a story if Charlie had scored on his debut then 2-0 Wales yeah good effort wasn't it just trying to pass it from all of 18 yards into that far corner keep it out of the parry in the end got lucky but yeah, he's having a real good first half Charlie Savage 32 minutes on the clock going as Wales would have wanted at the moment Savage really catching the eye so far not just because of the boots there's uh, although you can't miss him Broadhead now level with the penalty here Curls in across Moore was just being to that one does it come off a Gibraltar player I think it does Nico Williams realised that leaves it go for a corner Nico Williams has started on the left now on the right he seems Dave Edwards to be at home either side yeah, it's wonderful for Rob Page to have someone like Nico Williams who is versatile. Dan James is playing as a left wing back, but so high it's almost like a left winger. But Nico, he can really raise the tempo, can't he, of a football match. Broadhead with the corner. No, oh, there's uh, Cullum went flying in the six-yard box. Em Liam Cullum, diminutive player, not very big, but sharper on the penalty area, makes good little runs. Well, he's. Uh, as the cross comes in again, headed down by Davis. Well, was that the keeper got that over? He hit the post, I wonder. Yeah, defender cleared off the line, Rob. Great header. It was. Ben Davis got trick. the thirst for it. it. Would have been on that trick. And then he makes a challenge, which uh, Jabron, I think, thought was uh, a free kick, but none given yeah. by the Maltese official. Uh, I'd like to see second half, Rob, is one of our defenders just stay back 1v1 because you've got to be able to defend 1v1 and everyone step forward so the other centre half step in front you know really push up Williams right down side little step over cross into the box Moore's there peeking to it that time by Cipollina good touch by Regan Poole as the ball uh, dropped from the big clearance skied clearance Savage lazily wide to James James thought about crossing tried to play it inside the Ben Davis along the deck but at the for his error by charging down the taking the face off the clearance still 2-0 Poole is the furthest back of the defenders Savage again wide to James and what's he going to do here cuts inside then plays it in behind the defender for Savage. Gets to the byline. Has to turn away. Goes back to Davis. Kiefer Moore waits. So does Cullen in the box. But they go, they're going to go wide again. This is going to have its toll on these Gibraltar players, isn't it? Playing this way. Playing it wide. Yeah, that's shuffling right to left. And in fairness, Wales are moving the ball pretty quickly. One and two touch. It's really going to take the toll. Oh, lovely half. ball into Broadhead. Broadhead under his right foot. 3 0 Wales. Nathan Broadhead took a touch, laid it on for himself, and clipped it home from eight yards. 35 minutes gone. It's Wales 3, Gibraltar 0. Nathan Broadhead on the score sheet. Yeah, lovely turn inside the box, Rob. Sent pose, I think it was for fish and chips. Absolutely, went sliding by, cut back, and a lovely right foot bend shot in the top corner. Couldn't stop that if you had two keepers in the net. Really fantastic, fan fantastic finish. Decisive, wasn't it, from Wales? It was. They poked and they prodded, and they finally found that ball into Nathan Broadhead's feet. Look for all the world, he's just going to swivel and hit it on his left foot. The defender comes flying across. Has the awareness to chop back in inside, and then the finish. He only really <laughs> had a lot of the goal to aim at, didn't he? Yeah, he put yeah, it right in, the, yeah. right in the top corner. Fabulous finish from Nathan Broadhead. He's been very good this evening. I think he's looked very sharp up front. Um, and as a striker now, if you'll know, you're just thinking goals, aren't you? Yeah, especially in a goals. game like this. You know, can I go and get two, three? Once you've got the first one, right, can I go and second? Can I get a third? Really make a statement. Well, I should say that Oh, they've given the ball away again. High up field. Williams has seen plenty of exchanges, passes with Moore. Now Ben Davis. Across to 
Jordan James. Cullen's pulled wide on the right. Back inside a Savage. He's the pivot for all this, Charlie Savage. I think him and uh, <coughs> JJ have done well, Rob. Lovely, lovely little, little run play. by Davis in behind. So in a uh, broadhead. Crosses from the left hand side. Williams and Cullen, neither the tallest, come each other's way then. Ball out of defence, picked up by Regan Poole. And I should point out at this stage, not too long ago, Gibraltar played France and lost 3 0. And it's 3 0 to Wales now. So they do know how to defend on times against the mighty France. Yeah, and I like the way uh, I'm Savage now. He's left JJ in the pocket and he's pushing on, looking to get in behind with these little runs. Yeah, he's confident, isn't he? You yeah, can see he's, he's growing in confidence. It's, it's almost like he said, like, until we get two or three goals up, I'm just going to stay disciplined. I'm going to keep things ticking. He had a great game doing that. And now, go on, son. Go and get yourself a goal. Jordan James to Cullen. Cullen across the penalty area. Headed down by Kiefer Moore, but not to one of his own players. It was uh, Liam Walker who picked it up. Walker's on the ball now. Dances out of a couple of tackles. Plays it forward left-footed. The bar goes short. Tries to turn Jordan James. Runs into Cullen. And then Poole stepped in. As Wales win back possession, Savage on hand says, I'll take that. Leaves it to his captain who opened the scoring, Ben Davis. 3-0 Wales on BBC Radio Wales. 38 minutes gone at uh, a pleased race course at the moment. Yeah, and, you know, I know people will say, you know, it's the level of the opponent. You can only beat what's in front of you. These players are doing really, really well. That's the test, I suppose, will come against... Higher opposition, can they do the same sort James of thing? James crosses from the left, headed out. Savage collects. Touch to Ben Davis. Davis looks at the run of Kiefer Moore, trying to curl it in left footed. Wills pick it up again. I don't think they've had so much possession in a game for ages. 38 minutes gone. Dan James once more. Trying to be a bit clever then. Hit Jack Sargent. Free kick to Bralter. 3-0. Try to put it in context then, Dave. 3-0 at this stage. What are you thinking as a player on that pitch? Well, they'll be delighted because, like Nathan said, even though the opposition isn't really up to scratch, Wales have to look after themselves. And I think they've done everything right. The way they've approached the game, the intensity they've played at, moving the ball quickly, like we said from the start, getting into different areas on the pitch to try and jag, um, to dra drag Gibraltar around a little bit. And now as a player on the pitch, you're just... You just want the ball at this sort of time. You're winning three 0 You want to get on it. You want to make things happen. As attacking players, you want to get into the box and score goals. Um, it's important you don't get too single-minded about the goals and you play as a team. But what an opportunity for some of these players now to go and get their first Wales goals. Williams to James. Ball along the deck to Callum. Brings James Williams in again. again. Got pace on that right-hand side now. Savage and yeah. Poling. Pushes it over the top. Savage found himself in the penalty area. Angled shot on his left foot across the goal. And Colling palmed it over the top. Really? He is looking for a goal. He's releasing, Rob. He's releasing and going in and making that extra man. Like I said, I think you can leave 1v1 at the back now with the striker and really push everyone, your, midfield, your, your full backs and your other centre-halves into that midfield position. Five minutes to half time. Corner causes problems again. Cleared only as far as Nico Williams, just inside the penalty area, right hand side. Lays it back for Cullen. Cullen, dipping shot, but Colling, the goalkeeper, is behind it. Yeah, it's becoming a shooting practice, isn't it? Everything going for Wales. Like Dave said, you have to. You have to still be very professional, do things at a high tempo, because it's that tempo that kills these sorts of teams. You know, you play slow, lethargic kind of football, not get around, take your time. You know, they don't get tired. Their energy levels stay high. They're able to sit in and defend. But what Wales have done is, is be able to pull them apart side to side. And like I said, now you've got JJ just sitting in that pocket in that sort of advanced sort of defensive midfield role he's not in that sixth position a bit higher and Savage now making those runs in behind he's uh, 
Yeah, really impressed with him. Regan Pula just for a book for blocking Colin's path in a quick clearance. He's back there to head away the clearance. So plotted his copy book as uh, Regan Pula on his debut. These bookings won't count against the cautions Wales pick up in Euro 2024 qualifiers. They've got two players going into Sunday. Nico Williams and Chris Mepham on two bookings, so one more they'd miss the next game in that qualifying campaign. Don't forget, Sunday, 7 o'clock, BBC Radio Wales, Wales against Croatia. Have a look out tomorrow for Turkey against Croatia and Armenia, Latvia, or rather Latvia, Armenia. Those games are being played tomorrow night. Available from a broadcaster near you, I'm sure. 3-0 here in this uh, friendly international. It's already better than the last time Wales were here when they beat Trinidad and Tobago 1-0. And so far the punters have not been disappointed. Williams, Nico Williams that is. Back to Cullen. Davis is central. He spent most of his time in the Gibraltar half. Broadhead, little two, one, two with Cullen, and Cullen drives it left footed and it's pushed around the far post by Colin. Again, really good football around the box. Like you said, Rob, lovely one, two, and Cullen with a left foot rasper. He's pinged it, toe down, and everything. Great technique. I like him, you see, Nate. I think he's got the look of a goal scorer. Yeah, I haven't seen enough of him, Rob. Yeah. I need to start doing Swansea games. <laughs> says the Cardiff legend <laughs> I'll go down well yeah. I'll get the crowds back at the uh, Swansea.com <laughs> take the pressure off the manager see the effects Mike down cross into the box another chance here that... I think that time even Keeper Moore was climbing yeah. where did you get the most stick Dave Edwards when you were playing could have been no, here. Don't actually. tell me you're home fans. <laughs> yeah, Wolves fans. I, I, I had a, yeah, I had a bit of stick at Mullen. You threw a few dodgy years there, but <laughs> no, I was lucky enough not to play too many times at West Brom. I think that would have been the worst one for me. <laughs> oh, I played there a few times. Always scored though. <laughs> I remember you and Roberts turning up there, former Wolves <laughs> player, of course, and the guy on the door. He's taken his name. He said, no, I don't need it. He said, I know you. You scored a hat-trick here against us, didn't you? Yeah. You and Big and smiled. They don't forget, Rob. They don't. <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> don't. Here we are. 3-0 here. Williams is cross. Balloons up for Kivermore. Oh, really? Overhead kick. Well, he... He sort of landed on his backside rather than yeah, his back. He didn't fully commit to it, did he? <laughs> he kind of, he kind of. This is not a great idea as the ball yeah, was ballooning up off his foot. Yeah, this, this wasn't a scissor kick. It was kind of a sizz kick. <laughs> he's gone halfway. He's thought of it before the yeah, ball's even come yeah. to him, hasn't he? The ball and wasn't thought, quite in the right position. Yeah. He's thought, I'm going to go for it anyway. Hamstring. <laughs> and a, a nasty back jolt. Yeah. But he'll be pleased, Kiefer Moore, because he's not getting much game time. He hasn't started a championship game for Bournemouth. Just four substitute appearances in the uh, second tier. And uh, I bet he can't wait to get to Cardiff in the transfer window in January. At least that's the rumour. Here comes Dan James, flying down the left-hand side into the penalty area. Got Richards there. Four is one of them! And lays it on a plate for Kiefer Moore for his second. Wales is four. It's Wales four, Gibraltar nil. And this has been really impressive. Forget the opposition. You can only beat what's in front of you. And Wales have been clinical here tonight. Yeah, another really good ball in. Kiefer Moore pulled to the fast stick. Really made a lot of effort to get there. And that is his position, because I was thinking to myself, well, you've got two defenders in front of you, it is going to be difficult for the player to pick you out. Probably better getting across the face and, and having a sliding tap in, but no, chose the right run. Good ball in to the fast stick. As we've seen so many times with Keith, uh, real powerful, fantastic header. Yeah, let's get him off now, I think. Yeah, getting wrapped, getting game wrapped over. up for getting wrapped up for Sunday. Two goals, bit of confidence. Dan James is brilliant in the build-up to that. 
just drifted round his man and hung it up at the back post. And this is a defender's nightmare when you know you've got Kiefer Moore behind you coming in to attack you, waiting to get clattered, but clinical header again from the big man. Yeah. Ironic cheers as Danny Moore gets a touch. Yeah. I think it's the first time he's touched with his hands, wasn't it? <laughs> Probably is, yeah. Must be a nightmare for full-backs to know and you've got Dan James running at you as well. And like you say, Dave, great bit of quality there. And ben, oh, it was a beauty, wasn't it? Yeah, cross great from cross. The left. See, so Ben Davis has gone in and played in midfield, like you were saying before, Nathan. One yeah. of them stepping in, they don't need him back there, so he's literally drifted into a holding midfield role alongside Jordan James, yeah. orchestrating things. It just creates another overload. Well, that's why Savage is now up in the front line and making those lovely little dart and runs behind the back, well, back five. James pulls it back for Davis. Davis, little one, two, it brought it. Davis charges through off Cipollina, but it goes out for a goal kick. I didn't see the, uh, the fourth official put the board up, but I can't believe there's too long left in this first half. There were two minutes, and I make it. We play just about the two minutes now, so if the referee... A cruise in my time, keeping he'll blow the whistle as soon as the goalkeeper takes this goal kick. Oh, he must be listening. Well, what a good first half for Wales. They've done what they had to do. They've probably killed off the Gibraltar challenge already. And it's already comfortable. Two goals for Keeper Moore. A good goal for Nathan Broaden. And all started by the captain, Ben Davis. It's been a really satisfying 45 here at the race course. Far a Westburn's injury at half time. It's Wales 4, Gibraltar 0. It's the Rugby World Cup quarter final. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you will hear it all here. Live, Live. from Radio Wales on BBC Sounds. All the build up. The singing's already coming out, yeah. All the atmosphere. The Every kick. Enjoy the accuracy. Every tackle. Flying up in defence. Every try. Lewis V. Summit gives chase. Wales versus Argentina. This Saturday. Kick off at four. The Rugby World Cup. At your fingertips. From Radio Wales on BBC Sounds. Yeah, what a huge uh, afternoon we're going to have in Marseille on Saturday. And what a big night we're having here at Wrexham on Radio Wales Sport. Never mind the rugby, it could be a cricket score. Wales lead Gibraltar by four goals to nil at halftime. Gibraltar clearly not happy. The halftime team talk is taking place on the pitch. That's Sunday League, that's junior level football right there. The manager not happy. Rob Page will be happy, Dave Edwards. Yeah, definitely. Wales have been absolutely terrific. They really have. The way they've approached the game has been spot on. These hards can them. These, ga- these games can be very, very difficult when a team sits in like they did. The longer it goes out getting a goal, but Wales has moved the ball so well. The the movement, in particular from from Cullen and Broadhead coming into areas, trying to drag the Gibraltar defence around is extremely well. And then you can see everyone's growing into the game. Charlie Savage has been fantastic, and there's a lot of talk before the game, but he's been on the ball at every opportunity. He has not wasted a pass, different ranges. As the half's gone on, he's got into more four positions. But just the, the attitude of these Wales players to play at that intensity, that's what's done the damage. Well, Charlie Savage even runs like his father. A goal from Ben Davis, one from Nathan Broadhead, two from Kiefer Moore. His first goals in more than six months, Nathan Blake. Doesn't matter who the opposition is, strikers love scoring. Yeah, absolutely, we do. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know uh, they were saying two goals goals done get him off same but strikers you'll be thinking well let me just get my hat trick a minute let me just get my third goal and then I'll come off you know so he's, he's had a he's had a terrific half but like they said right the way through the team you know the balance has been really good and then when we think right your your two three goals are the good can they go and push a bit higher they've done exactly that you know move defenders into midfield push midfielders onto their back four created them created even more problems for Jabal I have to say it's just been a it's been a real professional performance. Yep. Well, let's see what can come in the second half. Commentary to come. We'll also head to France for the latest from the Wales camp at the Rugby World Cup and round up all the day's sport after the latest news, travel and weather for Wales with Sean Roberts. This is Radio Wales on BBC Sounds or on your smart speaker. Play BBC Radio Wales. BBC News for Wales. 
Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has agreed to form an emergency government with the leader of the opposition to coordinate strikes on Gaza. 1,200 Israelis were killed in attacks by Hamas close to the barrier with Gaza on Saturday. Israel has responded to that by launching constant airstrikes into Gaza. The BBC's chief international correspondent, Lise Doucet, says the effect on the area can be seen from some distance. We went to the edge of what's called the closed military zone, so about three and a half miles from the Gaza Strip. When you look at it from there, miles away, it is like a wall of smoke. The skies are blackened because uh, the Gaza Strip is coming under non-stop aerial bombardment. More than 1,100 people have died in the strikes on Gaza. The territory's only power plant has run out of fuel as Israel is blocking the entry of essentials, including food and water. The Welsh Government says it wants the UK Government to repair the damage caused by its handling proposals to house asylum seekers at a hotel in Carmarthenshire. Yesterday, the Home Office scrapped plans to house up to 241 asylum seekers at Stradi Park Hotel in Llanelli, a decision it has not yet explained. The Social Justice Minister Jane Hutt told the Senna this afternoon she was seeking urgent reassurances of responsibility from the Home Office, who have been asked to comment. A Wrexham University professor has refused to apologise after criticising Welsh language road signs, calling them unintelligible and potentially dangerous. Psychology expert Dr Nigel Hunt made the comments on a Facebook group. In a statement, he said he apologised for the way in which the comments emerged, but not the comments themselves, which he says reflects his beliefs. Finally, NASA has unveiled the contents of a sample collected from a distant asteroid, which was returned to Earth last month after travelling for almost three years. It says the material contains water-rich carbon, which could reveal how Earth and the solar system were formed. That's the BBC News. It's uh, nearly 20 to 9. BBC Radio Wales Weather. And a look at the weather. This evening, a few spots of rain in the north, uh, but turning drier with clear spells overnight. In the south, cloudy with spells of rain and some of these heavier later on. Minimum temperature 6 to 9 Celsius. Tomorrow, cooler and drier with just a few spots of rain. Cloud lingering in the south, but sunshine developing at times in the north, and then rain arriving in the south by the end of the day. Maximum temperature 12 to 15 Celsius. And that's the forecast. Your team for Welsh Sport. BBC Radio Wales Sport. Yeah, welcome back. It's been four years since Wales have played here at the race course and there's been four goals for fans to enjoy in the first 45 minutes. Wales looking good against Gibraltar. Corner from the left-hand side! Headed home! And it's the captain, Ben Davis, who's opened the scoring. Charlie Savage clips it in. Look at the keeper ball! 2-0! Lovely cross by Savage and more does what people more does. A oh, lovely ball into Broadhead. Broadhead on his right foot. 3 0 Wales. Dan James flying down the left hand side into the penalty area. Got Richards there. Four is one of them. And lays it on a plate for Keeper Moore. For his second, it's Wales 4 Gibraltar 0. This is BBC Radio Wales Sport with Chris Wathen. Nice and easy, really, for Rob Page. The only downside, an injury to Wes Burns. I'm not preempting anything, but two of Wales' biggest ever results have come here at the race course. They beat Malta by seven goals in October 1978, and Ireland by a record 11 goals to nil in 1888. Let's see what the second half's got in store. Second half commentary with Nathan Blake and Dave Edwards, and of course Rob Phillips to come. There are no other scores to give you tonight, by the way. The Euro qualifiers are starting tomorrow, including two games in Wales this group could be very important indeed first Armenia who level on points remember with Wales they take on winless Latvia in Riga at 5 then at 7.45 group leaders Croatia take on second place Turkey Wales could really do with a Croatian win in that one of course ahead of the Croats visit to Cardiff on Sunday in a game you can hear on Radio Wales Sport all the build up from Cardiff City Stadium start from 7 uh, but that only comes after part 1 on our weekend international double header the quarter finals of the Rugby World Cup Cup are up first. Wales against Argentina live on Saturday at four. Uh, let's speak to the man with the mic then. He's already in Marseille, our match day commentator Gareth Riso. And bonsoir, Gareth, how are you doing? Very well, thank you, Chris. How are you? A very good. A nice and quiet day for you, actually. No media duties today for the squad. So I guess that means there's no injury updates on Gareth Anscombe and Liam Williams ahead of the, the big team announcement expected tomorrow. 
Yeah, a day off for the players today and therefore for coaches and for any media briefings. Really interesting, the developments we've had over the past few days. And the question marks remain over those two positions, I think, 10 and 15. So this is what we know so far. Dan Bigger has been passed fit. We have to take the union's word for it. So Dan Bigger is available for selection, as is Sam Costello. So you would presume that Dan Bigger would start. But they haven't ruled out Gareth Hanscom yet. <laughs> Despite him suffering that injury pre-match against Georgia, you speak to any fly half, our man out here, Nicky Robinson, says that he finds it really difficult to see how Gareth Hanscom recovers from a groin strain in a week to play. But he's not been ruled out yet. But he'll have a fortnight if Wales go deep in this competition. And then Liam Williams, who left the ground in Nantes on the weekend on crutches, He's still fit, according to Wales. He hasn't been ruled out yet. So, therefore, as things stand, Williams could still make selection. Bigger should make selection. And technically, technically, Anscombe is also available too. I guess with you know we know that Lupe Falato is going to going to play a part with his, his broken arm. Kevin Hardy called up as a replacement. I guess that Liam Williams is probably the more important one, given that you'd expect Dan Bigger to start if he is fit. Yeah, it's a big call because Liam Williams has been outstanding in this campaign. And then there's a selection headache then for Warren Gatland. The two selection choices I think to my mind he can make. The conservative one, the sensible one, is 100 plus caps of Lee Halfpenny slots in. Defensively, defensively solid, great goal kicker, reads the game very well and we know what we get from Lee Halfpenny. Or, you twist... And you move Lewis Rees Samit to fullback. You bring in Rio Dyer, who Karen Juan Gatlin keeps complimenting time and time again. And you go with that structure. So if Liam Williams isn't fit, I don't think it's the end of the world. He's not irreplaceable. He's not even Talupe Falatau to my mind. Because mm. others may argue that it's a more exciting prospect to see Lewis Rees Samit, Rio Dyer, and Josh Adams on the field. But certainly he will be missed. OK, uh, Gareth, very briefly, you're in Marseille. Any fans start arriving? Many still on tour there? Uh, not that many, but much like the large, large uh, French cities, you f you'll find them in certain pockets. We had an early start. I'm by the ferry port this evening. I've t decided against going to the old port, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are a number of red shirts there right now. I'm sure you'll find them in the build-up to Saturday's uh, game. Live on Radio Wheel Sport. And, of course, Gareth Rousseau in uh, with the rest of the Scrum 5 podcast team. We'll be bringing you the reaction on the pod uh, with Gareth and the rest of the team. Uh, thank you very much, Gareth Rousseau win. More to come on Radio Wheel Sport this Friday. We'll also look ahead to the WXV, of course, the new tournament that kicks off uh, next weekend. You're on Cunningham's side travelling to New Zealand. But the tournament on everyone's lips this week has, of course, been Euro 2028. That's after con it was confirmed. Wales will stage its first ever major finals as part of a successful joint bid between the UK and Ireland. Plenty of big questions still remain regarding the number of games in Cardiff for example, especially over qualification for the host nations. David Pritchard has been getting the thoughts of the FAW Chief Executive, Noel Mooney. Six matches um, is in our proposal to come to Cardiff. The opening match, a quarter-final as well, is very much documented within that. So ideally, we would kick off the tournament in Cardiff in 28, and we go right through to the quarter-final, hopefully, and then go down to Wembley, win the semi-final, then win the final down at Wembley. Fantastic, and bring the trophy back up to Cardiff, ideally. You say ideally host the opening game. How close is that to being confirmed? Yeah, the associations are very much agreed. I mean, it's ideal the stadium as well. The centre of the city, it's 74,500 seats, which is considerably more than any other stadium outside of England. So what we really wanted was to make sure that Wales hosting our first tournament got the very most of it. So we've been working very hard behind the scenes. You can imagine negotiating... I wouldn't say arguing, but certainly discussing heatedly about this. And it turns out that, you know, Cardiff is fantastic for the opening match and fantastic for a quarter final as well. So the next thing we have to be con concerned about is qualification, of course, as well. And the proposal has been put forward to UEFA whereby um, that there would be some backup places, of course. But at the same time, we want to qualify ourselves automatically. I mean, for this tournament for Germany, we want to qualify automatically. We've got a big day on Sunday. We've got one of the world's top teams coming to Cardiff. But many times, before this team has delivered and they've delivered over and over again for Conley you just really hope that Rob and the, the guys are ready for Sunday and we really really hope they deliver 
Uh, FAW Chief Executive Noel Mooney speaking to David Pritchard here at the race course a little earlier. We might hear more of that interview after the second half of this friendly between Wales and Gibraltar. But quickly, Dave, someone who played in Euro 2016, of course, the thought of the Euros coming to Wales, coming to Cardiff, even if it is only for a certain number of games. Oh, it'd be sensational, wouldn't it? I think every time the Wales have hosted an international event like this, they've always been absolutely incredible. You look back to the Champions League and occasions like that. So it'd be amazing for, uh, for Welsh sport to get the Euros there and the games we played, the Principality. Um, even though France felt like at home anyway, didn't it, with those Welsh fans there. But an extra special to be in your, in your capital city. Uh, we'll get the thoughts of me from Blake Dewar and commentary because the teams are on their way back out, including, it looks like, a few possible changes for Rob Phillips to get his head around as he gets his highlighters and his pens out, making notes of the substitutions. The important thing, though, is Wales lead by four goals to nil. Will it be a record? Let's find out. Second half commentary for the former Wales internationals, Dave Edwards, Nathan Blake and our football correspondent, Rob Phillips. Yeah, and I'm looking down just below us and uh, two players ready to add to their cap tally, so they're not David Hunt. Josh Sheehan of Bolton and Tom Bradshaw of Millwall. And I can't see Kiefer Moore out there. So I think, uh, and actually Tom Lockyer is coming on as well, so... Oh, there's a changing goal, Wayne Hennessy is back! So, hang on then, Wayne Hennessy, Ben Davis the captain has made way for Tom Lockyer. Uh, who's making way for... Yeah, and it's... Uh, Bradshaw is on for Kiefer Moore. And Josh Sheehan, I don't know, Charlie Savage is still out there. And it's Jordan James making way for Josh Sheehan. So Wayne Hennessy back on the ground where it all started 109 caps ago. Made his debut in a draw with New Zealand. And there's a change for uh, Gibraltar, Amen Morley who was born, actually born in Barcelona, raised in Tunisia. He's a big Barcelona fan. He's coming into the back line. Give you who he's replaced at the moment. So let me just tell you how Wales are lining up now. It's uh, Wayne Hennessy in goal. And then Lowe is still the uh, at the back alongside now Tom Lockyer. Now a Premier League player at Luton with Regan Poole on the right-hand side. Sheila slotted into the midfield alongside Charlie Savage. On the right uh, wing now is uh, Nico Williams, our right wing back. Left side, Dan James, an early substitution for Wes Burns. And then up front, it's uh, Tom Bradshaw. Liam Cullen is still on there. So Tom Bradshaw and Nathan Broadhead. I think I'm right with that. Nathan Blake and Rob Edwards, I'm sure, will soon correct me if I am wrong. And I've got to say, brilliant to see Tom Lockyer not just back and a Premier League player but after what he suffered in the Championship playoff final brilliant to see him back in the Wales squad was picked in the last squad but got injured and was gutted chip across the penalty area by Nico Williams and Gibraltar are trying to uh, break forward but they run into traffic and immediately Tom Lockyer flies in a straight uh, amongst it, isn't he? <laughs> he loves it, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a real action man. Yeah. And... Well, here's a first. On X, Robbie Savage is just like my tweet about his son, Charlie. This is the most cordial we've ever had in relations. <laughs> Dave Edwards, thoughts on those changes? Yeah, they all make sense, don't they? In particular, Ben Davis, Jordan James and Keith Moore. You expect them to start on Sunday, so some valuable minutes in the legs for those boys, sharpening up a little bit. Yeah, so you can understand that. And more chances now for these lads coming on to impress. And Wayne Hennessy having his first appearance since May of any sort of football. As uh, Cullen plays the ball across the face of the box to Daniel James. Wales all in red, playing from left to right now. 4 0 up, remember, from the first half. Two goals to Kiefer Moore. Ben Davis and uh, Nathan Broadhead got the other one. 
low cross by Regan Poole which is uh, blocked and the ball is cleared away downfield picked up by Lockyer he will be absolutely thrilled he was so gutted to miss out the last time but he was listening to us Nathan in Latvia because he texted me about the red card said it was an obvious one he would call it right <laughs> well, I him to give praise to you I know but uh... Cardiff boy isn't he? yeah he is yeah was released by Cardiff City because he was too small yeah crazy look at him now yeah this is Nico Williams right side gets the byline lovely cross in oh it was a teaser that one he's delivered some good stuff from this side hasn't he on the right hand side Nico Williams yeah, he's got great quality hasn't he you really you'll see him uh, miss it across from both sides of the pitch as well James it'll be interesting to see how long they keep him on for because he will surely start on Sunday pull across the face of the penalty to Cullen Changes pass with Savage, little ball inside. Oh, James got caught on his heels then. Yeah, good play by Cullen, though, wasn't it? it Slow was and then sped it up. A little pass and move. Tender clears blocked by Nico Williams. Four nil. The last time Wales scored five goals, it was against Belarus. Savage shoots, looking for a fifth, but straight in the hands of calling from about 20 odd yards he really is relishing it isn't he Charlie yeah it Savage. deserves a goal for me it's worked really well really intelligently as well probably needs to be a, for a bit on physically but that'll come with age as I can lay testament to do you think he's done the right thing Dave going to a, a club like Reading I think just the opportunity to play football he showed how important that was last year when he went to Forest Green trying to learn what it's like to play in the Football League and Reading's a big club for League One isn't it so he's going to get used to that sort of that feeling um, being in and around the Wales got to be good but you say he's not quite there from a physical point of view but he works extremely hard he's getting all over the pitch I think he's been Wales's most impressive player this evening what I like most is that he's got this range of passing but he's never he's been very considered with every pass you can see he's thinking about what he's going to do is he going to hit it at pace is he just going to lay it off and then move again is he going to hit the diagonal I think he's kind of really impressed in that, in that aspect of his game yeah I like the way he sat back now into that holding midfield role with his first half he's done that job superbly and then moved into that more attacking role chip ball out to that left side by Cullen James crosses took a deflection up for a corner it was his first of this second half they lead by four goals to nil and uh, Gibraltar well they've looked uh, a little bit powerless to stop it Ball off to Wales, left-hand side. They want to pile on the goals. It's drilled in towards the uh, near post, headed out, though. Only as far as Sheehan, the bearded Josh Sheehan. Williams goes on an arcing run, leaves it to Callum, thought about shooting, does now. I think it hit his own man. I think it hit Poole as he went into the box. Did. Balloons out for Savage. Cullen picks it up again. He wants a goal tonight, Liam Cullen. Williams takes on two. Little uh, pull back. Sets up Savage, edge of the box. Goes square to Broadhead. Broadhead sets up James! Yeah, uh, goalkeeper save, but there was a foul anyway. Yeah, I think it was Broadhead. Just as the ball came to him, this is laid it off. <coughs> Just tugged on the... Uh, the centre back or the midfielder so he couldn't get there to block the block the next shot it's uh, Jace Oliveira who's been replaced and he'll want me to say that not only was he on the books of West Ham and Leicester but he actually got promoted from the Hellenic League Division 1 West with Abingdon I mean I know you wanted to know that Dave Edwards I can see the you're on fire tonight on Rob face. absolutely fire tonight so It's uh, Wales actually having to defend. Now, what can Gibraltar do here? Well, actually, nothing because it's played it, deflected in the path of Nico Williams, who's brought down. Free kick. And the 
free kick is in the right back position it was uh, it was Ethan Brito who uh, had a trial at Las Palmas who committed that little touch on oh, that time Cullen's caught it's been so neat and tidy Liam Cullen dropping into those pockets and having the awareness of what's around him Ethan Jolly was the offender there the cousin of the striker TJ Barr this is Poole Savage everything in front of him in, around the penalty area wide to Williams good first touch by Nico Williams takes on his man the Forest player gets to the byline and Nico Williams does no doubt need minutes hasn't had any club action since Wales played Latvia last month it's tough to get in that forest side. They've got so many players. <laughs> Cullen has made a run right-hand side. Now he's into the penalty here. Lays it back for Williams. Williams thought about shooting left foot. It goes on a run towards the six-yard box. Thwarted as he got there yeah, by the unlucky. substitution. Mule. Really unlucky. Shaped the shoot on his left foot. Lovely little drag across himself. Nico there. Open up the space, but took another touch. The ball's just under his feet a little, so he couldn't get the shot off. I see Degas' partner, it's Mouali, Amen Mouali of uh, the St. Joseph's Club on Gibraltar. Played against Norway, actually. After losing 3 0, came out and said he expected more of Holland. <laughs> <laughs> so he only conceded three. <laughs> so if Haaland and Norway only scored three, how good does this make this Wales performance? Oh, every, every every game is different, Rob, yeah. isn't it? You can only you can only do what you can do. And you know, if we're analysing Wales's performance, it's almost perfection this evening. You know, like we say, it's a lowly team. You know, not ranked. You know, 200 plus in the world. But you've got to go and beat them, and they've done it very well today. Yeah, a couple of more subs coming on for Gibraltar, I think. I think two things for Rob Page now. Probably like another goal this half to win the half, because these sorts of things get into players and managers' heads. And the other thing would be to make sure they keep a clean sheet. Yeah. One or two, uh, one or two phone lights up on the far side. Don't know what all that's about. Here's James bursting through the middle. He's got Bradshaw up ahead over, run it really. Breaks to Williams who charges through two challenges. Sheehan has it now, centre circle. Drifts forward, central, goes wide to Dan James who's popped up on the right. Back inside the Savage. Not afraid to shoot from there. Clips it across to Williams, intelligent ball. Back to Poole, Savage again. Pulling the strings, Cullen, little one-two with James. One current Swansea player, one former Swansea player combining on the edge of the box. Hoofed away, picked up by the substitute, Lockyer. Into Savage again, wide to Nico Williams. It's just uh, cut out by the defender. And Regan Poole will try to make sure, and does, that Kean Ronan of Kings Lynn doesn't get out of his half, runs it out for a throw-in, which has been taken, Poole again, Savage, he's got Broadhead wide on the left, goes short to Sheehan, who makes a little angle dart forward, wide to Williams again, Nico Williams seen loads of the ball, crosses in, I think he tried to catch Coling off guard then, but it wasn't to be, goalkeeper just got there, and it remains 4-0, Dave Edwards. Yeah, well, still in complete control. The intensity's dropped off a little bit with the way they are moving the ball around. That can be expected in these sorts of games, but I still think they need to get players high and wide and switch the ball really quickly. Nathan Broad is trying to do it on the left-hand side, but the ball keeps coming out to the right-hand side by us to Nico Williams. They can start moving it quickly. The only time it does look like it's going to spark into life is when it goes into Liam Cullen. He does little one-twos round the corners, trying to move the team around. They just need that little bit more pace. Yeah, I've noticed little Charlie Savage now. He has, yes, there we go. That's the first time he's played the ball out to the left-hand side. So you're right, Dave. He was coming down this right-hand side a lot. James has it on that left-hand side. Wales playing from left to right, leading 4-0. 
in this friendly of the race course. James, little one-two with Broadhead again. It doesn't quite come off, but Broadhead picks up the loose clearance. Dribbles his way into the box. James takes over, then loses it. Maybe should have left him. But Sheehan's there as well. Broadhead shoots, deflected out of the box. Picked up by Poole. Poole turns as Williams wide. Goes towards Williams. Then makes a run inside. Williams has run across left-footed. Sheehan back to goal. Plays in Williams again. Williams breaks through one challenge. Ball across the box and cleared away out for a corner. Yeah, good play again. Determination there. Into Williams. Lovely bit of skill. Takes on his man, gets around him. Just drills it across this time. Could have gone anywhere. Joseph Cipollina is about to come on. He's not a relative of Roy Cipollina, but he is a relative of Kenneth Cipollina, who's not involved in the match day squad. Corner comes in. Headed over the top by Joe Lowe. He was inches away from getting a debut goal. He's related to which Cipollina, Rob? <laughs> right, it's <laughs> Kenneth Cipollina. He's a Cipollina off the old block, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and he's replacing uh, Pozzo. He's obviously brought his own fan club with him. So, Nicolas Pozzo makes way for uh, Joseph Cipollina he's a prison officer and he made his uh, debut in Gibraltar's very first game against Slovakia in 2013 but he actually scored Gibraltar's first official goal in the UEFA tournament and uh, I've started, so I'm going to say it. That was against Montenegro in futsal. Oh, OK. I know you wanted to know that. Yeah, he yeah. He was just writing yeah. all this down so he can thrill his family <laughs> when he gets home. Yeah. You won't believe what I learned tonight about Gibraltar's players. If you want to get divorced, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. take this information home and talk to your wife. Cool. <laughs> Williams. He's seen so much of the ball. I wouldn't be surprised if him and Savage have seen more of the ball than any other players. We've got to have had like 85, 90% of the play tonight, maybe more. Yeah. Be a different story against Croatia on Sunday, I suspect. Oh, yes. Savage, that's a, oh, almost, almost a great ball through to Dan James. Just got out, but James has won it back. Good run by Dan James as well, inside left. Savage again. Leaves it to Broadhead, one of the goal scorers. Pull wide to Williams. Edge of the box. Low cross into the box. And missed by two players. Unlucky. They were really close then. One of them was uh, Nathan Broadhead, who was looking to get his second. Slid in at the far post. And Tom Bradshaw was there as well. Looks like another change in the offing. And judging by the hairstyle, I can tell it's uh, Harry Wilson. Born in Wrexham, of course, Harry Wilson. And just getting last minutes in, in last uh, instructions from the goalkeeping coach, Tony Roberts. comes off for Wilson I want to Bradshaw turns okay. on the byline again Colin was by himself then unlucky with the cross but really good play nowhere to go lovely little step over gets to the byline and digs out across can just quite cut it back far enough but all the same really good play it's nice to see Tom like yeah, as you said uh on the pitch, Rob. That old, uh, you're not going to be big enough, is the usual, <laughs> you're not good enough, we don't rate you. Yeah, quite. You know, didn't they had that one myself? You're not going to be big enough. I think Williams thought he was fouled then, but the referee, who's done all right so far, Philip Perugia of uh, Malta. Yeah. He has done, I mean, there's been nothing in the game, really, no. is there? There's nothing no. for him to do. 
It's just going back a lock here, coming all that way, being released. You can imagine the devastation being released from Cardiff. And here we are, what, a decade later, and he's playing for Wales. Well, his last Wales appearance was against Finland in uh, 2021, away in a friendly. Yeah, so it's a great story. He's been injured, of course. And then Premier he had, League footballer. Yeah. And uh, an international at the same time. And you never know, with Luton, who knows whether they'll stay up or not. He's obviously captain of Luton as well. He, he was, is, he was yeah. a very young captain at Bristol Rovers as well. That kind of shows his character. I remember when he first came into the Welsh squad, his attitude was absolutely brilliant. You know that he's worked really hard to kind of fight his way back up the ladder, get his opportunity. They're completely on merit now. Yeah, I'd say to any youngster, don't, when, t- when people tell you you're not good enough or you're not tall enough or not quick enough, you know, footballers come in all shapes and sizes just got to be dedicated to the game well, Nico Williams gets a round of applause all around the race course big night for Nico and a big night for Harry Wilson his family I'm sure is out in force as well and uh, there's another change for Gibraltar Ethan Jolly is making way for Kevin De Haro, who plays for Bruno's Magpies in uh, Gibraltar, and this is his debut, so a big night for him as well. He won't forget the race course. Four nil. I've got to say, I think the uh, the crowd have been pretty appreciative, haven't they, of what they've seen? Yes, yeah, been a perfect evening, really and truly, Rob. You say another goal this half would just round things off really nicely for Rob Page, but even if they don't get it, it's been a brilliant first half performance. So it means Dan James has moved out to the right hand side. Uh, Wilson has gone to play on the left hand side. And Lockyer will collect the long ball forward. Yeah, just need to get back into a little rhythm now, Wales, with all the changes. It does upset the, uh, the balance and the rhythm of the team for five, ten minutes. They get back into the swing of it. Like I said, trying to get themselves a, a fifth goal would be nice. 48th cap tonight for Harry Wilson. So he's heading towards the Golden Cap territory, which... Uh, Golden Cap Club, which Connor Roberts joined in the last international break, uh, in international window. Wales looking for another goal here. This is Wilson on the ball. Moves inside. Outside the right boot ball, out to James, right hand side. James crosses into the penalty area. And it's headed away and then hoisted away towards the bar. But Lockyer right on his back. Yeah, Bar should have gone down there. Should have used his momentum. A little shove in the back from Tom. He's up there on his own. He knows it doesn't matter. He can't keep hold of it. He may as well just try and buy a foul there. Cool now. Roy to Cullen. Inside right position. Back inside a Savage. Savage across to Wilson. Poole is there again. Two Welsh defenders back, but the rest all in the last third. Lovely cross from Dan James. Left-footed from the right-hand side. That's what you want to keep for more, but he's gone to rest up for Sunday. Yeah, we sat there thinking my hat-trick. That would have been mine. <laughs> yeah, hasn't been a hat-trick scorer. In fact, Gareth Bale has got the last two hat-tricks. Here's a surprise. Yeah. The last one was in that 5-1 against Belarus. It's nice football though by Gibraltar to get away. This is TJ Debar. Goes through the challenge of his uh, clubmate, Wickham clubmate Joe Lowe. Still on the ball again, TJ Debar. Tries to set up a shot from the edge of the box. And Sheen is brought down, and that will be a Wales free kick. Midway through the second half, lost a bit of momentum, Dave Edwards. Yeah, it has. It's uh, 4-0. Yeah, loss of, loss of momentum. Gibraltar there sort of breaking away. 
the bar on the ball you're thinking from their point of view just have a shot there was a yeah, moment you could have had a shot yeah, yeah. have a shot he tried to be a little bit too precise and allowed Wales to get back in but Wales have picked it up I think this last five minutes so they are starting to really switch the ball they're going from side to side and they're doing it continuously really moving the Gibraltar team around and when they do that a few gaps appear and they've got a good couple of crosses into the box which could have quite easily resulted in a, a shot for Wales but they have just picked up the tempo in this last few minutes again yeah, but expect Wilson to add a bit of impetus on that because he's a live wire, isn't he? And he's got one with the left foot. Yeah, that yeah. helps. We'll fancy a goal tonight, I'm sure. He's done a right mind to bar tonight, the centre forward. To see. And a few half decent performances from the Gibraltar team. Yeah. It can't be easy going out and getting beat every, every international no. game. He's got... Uh, three goals and they've all come in wins Armenia Liechtenstein and Latvia so three goals he's not far behind the top goal scorer which is five they beat Latvia yeah yeah they did uh, wow. a few years ago a couple of years ago September 21 but they've lost their last 11 away games on an aggregate of 45-3 yeah, and this isn't going to impress yeah. this isn't going to change that very much Cullen slots it out first time ball inside but you see the difference without Kiefer Moore don't you, you do yeah see. absolutely Bradshaw is not that sort of player no a bit more intricate yeah you know as a as a full back or a winger you can just hit an area towards that fast stick you can even put it high because he's so tall Kiefer you know Starts at 6-3, 6-4. It's tough for Bradders as well. He's up there and he's making these little darting runs, but there's so many bodies back from Gibraltar. It's going to take an absolutely per perfect pass to get him in. Yeah. Whereas Kiefer Moore, like you said, you can just hang one in there, can't you? And he can go and dominate with his physicality. Yeah. That low is easily the tallest player on the pitch now, isn't he? The centre half. Yeah, the old boy. Yeah. Sheehan back in the international fold last month. A few subs, uh, I think, warming up for Gibraltar as well again. They've got the Republic of Ireland in the next few days in their European group, which they're bottom off, haven't scored in it yet. Uh, Savage floats the ball into the box looking for Bradshaw I think it might have been offside Bradshaw and the flag goes up and it's still 4-0 with uh, 20 minutes to go here we go El Hamidi is coming on so Ayobel Hamidi plays for Arreo in Spain. And 21 Coombs comes on. Jamie Coombs. And I'm glad he's come on because you will not believe who he Here used to play go. for. Here we go. Here we go. I mean, waiting for Jamie Here Coombs to come on. He studied in Cardiff University. And while he was there, he played local football in Gwent for Undy Athletic. <laughs> Club formerly managed by, in fact, I think he might have managed him at the time, one Michael Flynn. So... And the athletic. <laughs> I think the tumbleweed moment said it all, didn't it? <laughs> Dave Edwards, do you know when the athletic? I do now. <laughs> you do now. Yeah, thanks for well, that. Nathan Blake knows it. I don't know. You know Andy? No. It's where Newport trained for a while. I know Underwood. I used to live there. I don't know no, Andy. Andy. No. It's uh, Chepstow's side of Newport. I know Chepstow. Anyway, Mike Flynn managed there before he uh, did his heroics at Newport County. And actually, Jamie Coombs did score against Penna Bont. I'm sure Dave Edwards has heard again about Penna Bont. Have you, did you score against Penna Bont in your ballad days, Dave? Um, did I? I don't think I did, you know. 
Didn't right. enjoy playing at Penny Bond. Tough place to play that. Yeah. See, I set you up and then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell a lie, I did actually. My first game for Bala. Oh, you scored? Yeah, yeah, 2 2 draw. Oh, there nice we are. To good. See, I knew, I knew my research wouldn't be in vain. Oh, good turn by Broad, who's been pulled. Still goes on, though. Wilson, into the box is Savage. Savage floats it across to James. Touch takes him back out of the penalty area, right hand side. Sheehan has made the run. This is Sheehan, low cross corner. Did you know David scored in that game, Rob? Uh, no, just, I didn't. Oh, okay. But it was just... So you didn't really do your research. But sometimes really, you know the you gods are with you depth. when he mentions yeah. something. You didn't do it in depth. And yeah. such was his impact at Barlow. The chances were he would have scored against <laughs> one of us. <laughs> we need a goal here, don't we? It's drifting now. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine where you'd be without my research. 73 minutes gone. 4-0. Nothing much happening. But you're learning something. Wilson, cross on the left, header down, and Colin collects. Lowers the header. Plays it long, but Sheen is back there. Does a good enough defensive job, so does Charlie Savage. Oh, and actually Sheen is penalised for holding. Looks absolutely aghast at no, that decision. I, I, think, I think they both had a little tug of each other. I think Sheen just stepped across into his path, Rob. Just obstructed him a little. Anything else you want to know about Gibraltar itself, Dave? Just say you've got about... Uh, British territory? 16 <laughs> minutes. Do you want that? And we haven't even mentioned it's got the only wild monkey population in Europe. Macaques? Yeah, they have got macaques there. Yeah, well done, Nathan Blake, just testing you. Yes, yes. They've got yeah. red phone boxes, and you can get married there at a day's notice. Yeah, it's a British territory, that's why, Rob. Yeah. And do you know who got married there? Somebody really, or two people, three people really famous got married there. Yeah, Dave Edwards, I'll let you have the first choice. <laughs> One of them was a James Bond. Um, Pierce Brosnan. Wrong. Sean Connery got married there twice. He liked John it Lennon. so much. And John Lennon married Yoko Ono. Yes, Nathan Blake, it's as if you've read my notes. I, do, I, I, I read your mind, Rob, not your notes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If you want to, anything to know about Croatia, join us 7 o'clock on Sunday <laughs> here on BBC Radio Wales. I'll spend the next few days just mapping out research on Croatia. Just for our listeners, Rob, huh? Yeah, exactly. Keep them entertained. Yeah, and on BBC Sounds. It's 4-0. That's a great ball by Cullen. Picks out Wilson. Into Broadhead. Thinks about shooting. Takes it on. Still going. Surrounded by white shirts who managed to get the ball away, and they'll be chuffed that it's no goals in the second half at the moment. Yeah, you almost have to take a touch and get your shot off because as soon yeah. as you take a second touch, two or three players are straight at you. You can see why they've played in some games and uh, been able to keep the score down for so long. Good play by Lockyer then as well. This is uh, James, right hand side, three outs in the corner of the box. Now he drives forward a little, holds it up for Cullen. Cullen to Savage, who's central. Cullen again. Bradshaw keeps making these runs, Dave. You keep seeing them. <laughs> Paul just does the right. Savage! No, not going to score from there. I'm going to say, if he's made 200 passes, he's probably missed three this evening, young Savage. Yeah, he's been the heart of everything, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's been brilliant. Fair play to him. MOM for me so far. The Wales are just starting to narrow up a little bit. He got the ball then, Charlie Savage looked out to the left-hand side and everyone was inside what the, the penalty area would be. He yeah. needs, they really need Which, to stretch him. Yeah. They had a little opportunity a second ago. Cullen hit a lovely cross-field pass um, out to Broadhead. And because he did it quick, all of a sudden there's a couple of gaps available and they look like they might create something. When it's a bit slow and ponderous around the box, it's difficult, but they need to keep that width. That's really important. Yeah, it's easy to creep in, isn't it? Because you think in goal, I want to get in the box. Yeah. So you, all you're doing is condensing your own space really. Really and truly you need to keep that discipline and keep the keep the game spread right across that 18 yard line and out to the flanks let me ask you this then Dave Edwards Nathan Blake if Chris Meppham doesn't make it on uh, ready for Sunday he's not in the squad tonight he's carrying an injury they know that they're working on him in camp who steps into that centre-back booth which he has occupied with great regularity 
in, in most of Rob Page's reign. Well, listen, it's, it's there's no Ben Kabango, remember? Yeah, he's, he's out, with out injury. injured. I think he's got a hammy, isn't he? I, yeah. I would say, listen, I don't think you know, Lowe has done anything wrong tonight. I think he's had a really good game. The problem is, is the opponent, Rob. Yeah. I mean, we we are lording over some of these players, but at the end of the day, it is Gibraltar. Yeah, you yeah. don't get this time and space against a better opponent. James Hall oh. hits the post with a curler from the right edge of the penalty area, left-footed. Oh, an inch or so inside, and that would have uh, ricocheted off the far cross. Uh, Upright. That was beautiful, wasn't it? Would have it? been a beauty here. Yeah. Right behind it. See it bending all the way. Yeah, terrific strike by Dan James. Just shifted it quickly. So he tried to set it out at the post. So we were right behind it. Terrific yeah. effort. So you maybe want to think about. I go Lockyer probably. Yeah, right I was going to say. I think mean, Lockyer is the obvious one, isn't he, to play alongside Joe Roden and, and Ben Davis. Um, I do really like um, Regan Paul as well. I said I've watched him a few times this year for Portsmouth, and he's. He really reminds me of James Chester, that sort of unassuming defender, but very comfortable on the ball, aggressive, calm. Um, and I think as an outside centre-back, it would really suit him. I really do, whereas I think Tom Lockyer is more of a, a central one, do you know what I mean, a battler in the yeah. middle, um, whereas I think Regan Paul will be able to step in. But I think Tom Lockyer is the, the obvious one. With him playing Premier League football, being able to handle a big game, I think that's the way Rob Page will go. I think that was one of Regan's uh, biggest attributes, the fact he could play so well in that defensive right back right centre back position here come Wales again Cullen crosses from the right left footed it's cleared away Lockyer's going to get there first oh it uh, ricochets beyond uh, Tom Lockyer off uh, the aforementioned former Undy player Jamie Coombs as you were saying, Nathan, it's so important when you play a back three, those outside centre-backs are comfortable in those full-back areas. Defensively as well, they're happy to get into that channel, go yeah, 1v1. 1v1 yeah. say ben Davis is comfortable, he's got the experience at left-back. Um, I think Regan Paul really suits that position. Yeah, because he is a good defender as well. He's not just the, you know, he's not the type of player who's a you know, defender who loves attacking. He's a really disciplined lad. He was more a full-back, wasn't he, at Newport? Yeah, Newport. yeah, yeah. He was a young lad, though. You don't yeah, put young was, lads yeah. in that centre-back position. Well, we tend to put him in the full-back position. And because he's not massive, is he? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's, no. he, he's, a, he's got a good presence about him. Yeah. He has wrong. now. He's filled out, you know, it's what, what we were just talking about, about young Savage. These things, as you get in your mid-20s and, you know, you go away for the end of the season, you come back a stone heavier and you haven't done anything. All you've done is train. Yeah, Croatia are without a few as well on Sunday. Kramaric, one of them, uh, they're, uh, one of their feared strikers, he's out with injury. They've got one or two injured, but they've still got a formidable squad. The other thing is to bear in mind that uh, the Manchester City defender, Guardiol, is on two yellows. So if he gets a yellow against Turkey tomorrow night, he won't be playing in Cardiff. And every little helps, you might think. Every, every little does help, Rob. I think the interesting dilemma will be the midfield, whether he goes with three in there or if he plays sort of a holding two and then three up front. My preference would be to play three because they're so strong in midfield, aren't they, Croatia? That's their best to. area. Yeah, I think you have to. I think we've been proven fallen short so many times with just two in there. And then two, sometimes ill-discipline has cost us as well. One of the two drifting away out of position. So I would go for the three every time to... Yeah. yeah, Jordan James, Ethan Ampadu, then Harry Wilson just in there as well. Lovely ball in again by the son Sheehan, but it's cleared away. It's another foul by Joe Lowe. So I know Chris Wath and his, but I don't want to script the end of his programme for him, but I'm sure he will ask you for a team to play Croatia. Oh, I can't do that. So you want to think about that? No, I can't. I can't do that whilst commentating. 10,008 the attendance why don't you give us the team Rob and then you know I'd say yeah or no well if I give you the team you'll just say no it won't be that <laughs> I'll say yeah for the sake of it just to make you feel better okay I'll have a think about it now while I'm commentating don't worry about me yeah same here I, <laughs> I can multitask <laughs> Yeah, we found that out on the way up. So you watch dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even start. <laughs> so you what you were thinking there. Have you got a dishwasher, Dave? <laughs> yeah. All right, yes. okay. I'm not even going to go there again. 
I feel you're the only one who works at BBC World who hasn't got a dishwasher. Got a TV, right, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works on gas. Mm. This is Lockyer. It's 3 4 nil to Wales. And uh, Gibraltar have proven fairly stubborn in this second half. Admittedly, a few of the big guns, notably Kiefer Moore. And the captain, Ben Davis, have gone off. Yeah, Wales have stopped pushing as well, I have to say. The game is just, you know, it's walking pace now almost. And this is when I say, and this is when teams are difficult to break down when you're not moving that ball. They've made a point early on about, you know, the tempo of play, the one touch, the two touch, the movement. If you're not doing that, you know, people can get two banks to... Oh, bank of four and bank of five behind the ball. It's difficult to break down. Yeah. I'm just thinking that Croatia midfield, Brozovic, Modric and Kovacic. Not very good, is it? Fierce, isn't it? Yeah. That's why I don't think you can afford to put a two in there against that. You have to go man for man. Well, your thoughts? Post them. That BBC Ready Wells. Low has to go back to goalkeeper Wayne Hennessy. It is debut on the same day as Chris Gunter. Oh, that's, a good ball. that's a lovely ball by Cullen. Sends James streaking down the right side. Now he delivers a cross. Bradshaw was going in. Goalkeeper just beats him to it. Bradshaw ends up in the net. I think he got caught as he went past as well. And he's still down in the uh, back of the net. Yeah, he just needed to make the run a bit earlier and get across the keeper. He's just waited. Uh, he, it was almost like he thought, right, if he puts it on my head, I'm in I'm in the middle of the goal or just off centre of the goal. It's an easy finish. But if he makes that little dart and run across the keeper, gets in front of the keeper, you know, he leaves the keeper totally stranded there. And it's a little touch. Would have ended up in the back of the net. It's, br it's brilliant in the build-up from Liam Cullen again. I think he's been the one in the second half who's looked most likely to spark some attacking prowess into this team. He dropped into that pocket again, little reverse ball that set Dan James away. I think he's been really impressive. Lovely little player, isn't he? So, the, uh, as Bradshaw gets a bit of treatment, the team that faced Latvia was Ward in goal, Mepham, Roden and Davis, Nico Williams and Connor Roberts are wing-backs, James Ampadu, Wilson and Ramsey, Brennan Johnson up top. Well, so no Johnson and no Ramsey. There's no Johnson, no Ramsey. Moore goes in up top, I'm sure. Uh, maybe Lockyer in for Mepham. I think the wing backs remain the same. Jordan James and Ampadu asserts. And then it's a question of probably Harry Wilson as well. David Brooks. Uh, Dave, uh, well, James is the other one. Maybe James goes I, wide. I say he goes. I would say he goes up front with Kiefer Moore. Yeah. Play on the counter attack with with them too. Yeah. Harry Wilson into like a number ten position. Try and sit in and around. Yeah, I'd go the other way. I think Brooks will play for James. I think he's uh, he's the most dangerous player we have. I think at the moment from an attacking point of view. I think he can do a bit of everything. But it's interesting Brooks, he hasn't played tonight, Dave. Yeah, Brooks. and uh, James has stayed out there for yeah almost 80 minutes. Although that was not expected because Wes Burns had to come off with yeah, injury. Yeah, but you would think if he was playing Sunday that you know, better come off by give now. him 60 minutes and bring him off. Yeah. Anyway, it's 4-0, and we've got about four minutes. Just another goal would set it up just nicely on what has been a decent night here at the race course the crowd have turned up I think they've enjoyed what they've seen and Wales have done the job yeah they've seen goals Rob it's like to become an exhibition match but that's only because Wales done so well in the first half got the two goals after about 25 minutes and then the third and the fourth and they've just shut it down really Wales a lot of changes and people a bit of a run out I'm surprised we haven't seen Luke Harris. He keeps turning up and uh, not getting a game. And we should say as well that uh, Owen Beck isn't hasn't had a runner either. Ian Rush's great nephew. But him, Savage and Harris will be joining the under-21s after this game. Unless there's a late change. 
Les Savage has done enough to earn a spot against in the squad against Croatia. Oh, oh no, chance of Bradshaw! Hits the side netting, inside right. Little ball played low in behind the defence. Bradshaw hit it on the run, Dave Edwards. Yeah. That's the chance he's it's, waiting it's the, for. It's the first time his movement has come off and Gibraltar a little bit spread, so he's in that right channel, but he's got to go across the goalkeeper. He went near post, goalkeeper had it covered. He has to go across, even if the keeper saves it. There's other Wales bodies in the box that could perhaps get the rebound, but that's the first time he's had that little moment of half a yard spoken like a true striker I'm the one getting the rebounds in the box that's why I'm going to say it's been a joy to have you two alongside me tonight likewise Robert likewise uh, <laughs> the Gibraltar coach Mr Ribeiro has been pushed back to his technical area former Penarol boss in Uruguay I never understand that. Why there's a box and you stand, you have to stand outside it. Almost all <laughs> managers do it. And it's the, it's the look. He's a yard from it. It's like yeah. It's not a very big box either in Wrexham. Yeah, but it? what's uh, that yard making a difference? I was, you know, seeing him in. Uh, well, it gives the fourth official something to do. The Premier it? League and the Championship all the time. Yeah. EFL. I feel Mr. Zamet on the, the fourth official there, Feyador Zamet. He's not had a lot to do other than hold the board up a few times. He so looks like he's given up now as well. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously not a meeting of minds, was it? And now he goes back, Mr. Ribeiro. Both managers have a similar haircut. <laughs> you go again. <laughs> Didn't take him long. Didn't take him long at the barbers. Number one, please. <laughs> <laughs> Four nil. It's a it's a night to be jolly, to enjoy what we do, and we've enjoyed our international experience in North Wales. I mean, you've got to say, the Wrexham faithful are used to watching goals here. Yeah, it's from like the team in red. Wales have turned it into a, an exhibition almost. They have. Savage is still out there getting involved. Lockyer steps in, doesn't get the ball, takes the man. Yeah, that's that's one thing I would say about Lockyer is because, like Dave said, he's that battle-hardened sort of central sort of warrior. And international football, strikers are clever, right, Dave? Players are yeah. clever. You know, they will get around you. They will upset you. They will tug. And, you know, not saying they don't in the Premier League or they don't in the Championship, but when you get to the international level, you do pick up new tricks and learn new things. I think he's just got to be aware of that. Can be embroiled in, like, you know, those close-up battles. You've got to give himself a yacht, especially against someone like a team like Croatia because, you know, they're so wise in the way they play. Yeah, he's a scrapper, isn't he, Tom Yeah, Mark, yeah he is. everything's a fight. Yeah. It's his best asset, though. So that is his... That's, that's what gets him going. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, going yeah. and competing, yeah. battling. Yeah. I did um, a game earlier in the season when we played Wolves, and he was exactly the same in that game. He got a Wolves player sent off because there was a bit of a clash in the middle of the pitch, and he yeah, used experience, yeah. trapped him to the floor, didn't let him get away. Um, yeah, and that's what he's all about. He enjoys that physical contact. You've got to love him, really, haven't you? Yeah, oh, absolutely. He's a great lad. You'd want him. Oh, lovely cross by Lockyer. Can Wales make something of it? What was he doing out there, left wing? Well, it was a beautiful cross, Rob. He was <laughs> floated across the whole six-yard line. I'm waiting for someone to dive in on there. Kiefer Moore's definitely sat there salivating and think, there is my hat-trick for sure. You'd probably tell him afterwards, where were you, boys? Yeah, great cross, though. And... Touch for Wayne Hennessy. There haven't been many of those. In fact, Danny World, we think, only handled the ball once. As uh, when is Hennessy picks up cap number 109 tonight. So he moves level with Chris Gunter, joint second behind uh, Gareth Bale on 111. And this is where it all started. New Zealand in 2007. For Wayne Hennessy, and he'd be glad of a game. So we're uh, approaching the final whistle. 
and Rob Page will be satisfied by what he's seen. Bowling with maybe the last clearance. That is the final whistle. Applause of approval from the race course faithful who have enjoyed the return of international football to North Wales. And Rob Page's side have done what they had to do. A convincing win over the Minnows Gibraltar. Four goals in the first half. Two for Keeper Moore. One for Nathan Broadhead. And the captain, Ben Davis, started it all. Plenty of the dividends did themselves no harm whatsoever. But we all know, bar an injury to Wes Burns, the big game is Sunday against Croatia. Wales, that will be a totally different kettle of fish, but Wales will go there in good spirits. It's finished here. Wales 4, Gibraltar 0. Well, we did start talking about record scores at half-time, all a little bit premature, but it is Wales' biggest victory since they beat Belarus in November 2021. 4-0, the final score goals for Kiefer Moore. How important could they be in terms of getting his confidence up ahead of that huge game against Croatia? on Sunday night a game you can hear live on Radio World Sport by the way in case you're interested in the statistics I know Nathan Blake's a fan 78% possession in the end 28 shots on goal 11 shots on target doesn't make for great reading actually they should have been a bit more clinical but Nathan Blake um, he beat what's in front of him Wheels did that minutes in the legs for some of them chance to impress job done yeah it could be a difficult night right Chris but they've turned it into an exhibition simply on their first half display scored the goals kept the ball some brilliant performances from a few of the debutants like we mentioned for Rob Page the only positives really and truly tonight could be the, the debutants play and they play well and you get your striker on and he scores a couple of goals so from that point of view it's been a brilliant night for Wales and a great night to have it up here in Wrexham again for these fans these fans have seen Wales win 4-0 and they're going home happy so you know it's been a great night all round some of the legends definitely happy Kevin Ratcliffe and Rush making their way into the director's box in the centenary stand here uh, a Wrexham legend as well certainly at the moment manager Phil Parkinson giving the Gibraltar players a little round of applause a side rank 198th in the world 0-0 no, no in that second half Dave Edwards they, give, they certainly didn't give up they certainly made it difficult for Wales but how much can Rod Page take from an opponent like this from a technical point of view it's very difficult but from an attitude point of view I think he can take a lot Wales were, were very very good in that first half regardless of the capabilities of Gibraltar he kept saying they moved the ball so quickly, played of intensity, and they blew them away. And that's what set up the second half, where it was just a little bit too easy for Wales. They came a little bit ponderous on the ball, but still in complete control. The Royal team, they, they worked their socks off. They got back in their shape, but every time they won the ball back, they were unable to keep it for more than two or three passes. Um, but I think Rob Page would be absolutely delighted, in particular that first half performance. Those debutants all did really, really well. Keeper Moore getting goals, so important. Um, obviously, the the one the one thing which he won't be happy with is Wes Burns, Wes Burns picking up that injury. He'll be gutted for him. Hopefully, it's not too serious. Um, that's always a risk in these sorts of games, an innocuous challenge. Um, but I think Rob Page will be happy. His team is set up nicely now for Sunday. Yeah, we will look ahead to that Croatia game uh, before Larry Sean takes over at 10 o'clock. We we'll try and get you the reaction as well from the Wales manager, uh, Rob Page. Back-to-back -back wins, of course, after a very difficult summer as the Wales players complete their lap of honour. It's a bit shortened here at the race course, of course. They're going to have to go to the cop end. That is waiting redevelopment. And while we're a bit cynical about the standard of opposition, why we we'll wonder how many questions can be really answered, what we have to remember is the scores, and I mean scores, of young fans wearing their bucket hats, peering over the sponsorship hoardings, applauding players who, regardless of the standard of Gibraltar, will have been inspired by watching their side, especially the young North Wales fans, Nathan. Absolutely, and you've got to, you've got to think yourself, Chris, right? Although, you know, the Cardiff City Stadium is the home ground of the, the national team, you know, people from North Wales, as we've travelled up to date, travel an awful long way and spend an awful lot of money 
get into the, the games, the tournaments, support, and so, you know, I wouldn't say competitive, the competitive group games, but there's no reason why friendlies and what have you can't be played up here just to show a bit of love for, for the North, you know what I mean? I, I think it's been a, a great night all round, to be honest with you. Every fan's journey starts somewhere, it might be tonight for some of those young fans, hopefully watching a tournament, who knows, 2028 20, in a few times where they've got their hearts on their own part of the Red Wall. We'll hear again from the Chief Executive Noah Mooney as well, hopefully before 10 o'clock. Uh, but we talked about people starting their journey. Charlie Savage, he impressed you both. Fantastic. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. There's a lot of expectation on this young man's shoulders partly because of his old man but coming through at Manchester United and I think a little bit of excitement around him and he didn't disappoint right from the very first moment when it was a little bit tight in midfield he got his first pass away and then he just grew into the game showed an array of different types of passing short, long, quick, slow started to venture towards the box got his assist had a couple of efforts at goal I felt it was a very productive display from him yeah showed a lot of game intelligence for me uh, sat in that midfield and controlled things him and JJ for large periods of the first half and then when the game was, was won basically he moved forward as we were hoping that the, the team would move forward leave the striker up front with one defender against him and everyone pushing the, or defence pushing to that midfield and pushing midfield on exactly what he'd done and then made some really intelligent runs and almost got himself on the score sheet himself but he'd be delighted that he's come out under this pressure played the game he has and given an assist to keep for more I think it's been a great night all round but at the same time we, we it's, it's against the better opposition now so for him for for, for Charlie for, for Rob Page tonight was about just getting the getting the first cap and, and getting over your nerves and what have you I was going to say it's then the next step is right now you come up against an opponent who isn't going to give you that space isn't going to give you that time you know, so you're over the hurdle of getting my first cap, but now, you know, and this is where I think over the years, he's still only a baby, right? So physically, he will naturally develop. And if you look at his father's frame, his father was never the biggest, but he was a warrior, Rob. He'd go through anything and he'd fight and tackle anybody. So uh, Charlie is a different specimen, as in he's not looking to go to war with someone. He is looking to make things tick and he does it very well physically that's going to be the only thing he'll need to improve but that will come with natural age and time so for me you know uh, MOM performance for me tonight from the young man uh, and you made the point about Thomas normalising this international setup, and, and that would right, be the same yeah. for Regan Poole making his debut a little bit older granted um and, and Joe, Joe Lowe as well who looked very impressive big unit at the back doing well with Wickham this season that's the key isn't it Dave rather than when you are needed then when you are playing regularly that emotion of that first cap that experience of being around Ben Davis and the big time players has gone you've, yeah. you, you've done it definitely definitely it was the perfect game for those players it really was because you know you're going to have a lot of the ball you know you're going to be able to build your confidence and they all did well and they say they didn't get into any bad habits they kept the ball moving I thought Regan Paul was brilliant he's really kind of put himself in line to, to be the next man in I think after Tom Lockyer at the moment so he, he did himself no harm I thought Liam Cullen was excellent second half he was the one who was trying to make things happen we spoke about Charlie Savage as well um, but as a, an older player in that dressing room and as a teammate all of a sudden even though it was against Gibraltar you're giving the ball to these players on the pitch you know they can handle it That's that will build their confidence and that will say integrate them into the group better rather than just training a little bit with the lads and then not knowing how they're going to fare when they get out onto the pitch this will do them the world of good and their, and their teammates as well or, or playing against a, imagine that was Croatia tonight he will flip everything on his head we're doing the chasing <laughs> the young lads right with the inexperience you know you take a touch Charlie Savage and bang Modric is on you he's gone with the ball you know it, it totally flips on his head so for me perfect performance uh, and a perfect team to play but still you've got to go and beat them and they did done really well I can tell you something for nothing Wales aren't going to have 78% possession <laughs> <laughs> against Croatia <laughs> on Sunday and I don't think Rob Phillips is going to have much time to Croatia offer as many <laughs> facts about Croatia as he did about uh, Gibraltar uh, this evening. That game, don't forget, 7 o'clock at the build-up from Cardiff City Stadium at 7.45 at kickoff. 
uh, it's going to be vital for Wales don't forget those uh, other fixtures in Group D tomorrow uh, Latvia against Armenia Armenia remember still on the same points as Wales Turkey and Croatia play each other tomorrow uh, Turkey three points ahead of Wales level on ten with Croatia Turkey haven't played a game more of course reality Wales need a Croatia win and then hope they can pick something up against Turkey otherwise it could look very dodgy indeed I tried to have my abacus out uh, yesterday Dave Edwards and try to work it out I'm not going to start until at least after tomorrow's results it goes without saying Wheels need to pick up something a point they definitely need a point I think if you look at the games and like you said I've looked where I think the wins are going to Dave we'll, we'll come back to you in a second because you've been talking about Charlie Savage